Hello everyone and welcome to All Team Academy. I'm your host, Zach Peterson, and today we're gonna to be covering the three common types of PCB manufacturing output files. Each of the three common formats contains different sets of data and they contain different file structures. We're gonna run over all of that in this video and we'll see some examples in All Team Designer and an external IPC viewer. Make sure to follow along and let's get started. Now there are three types of manufacturing files that you can create for your projects inside your PCB design software. The first and most common are Gerbers. So what are Gerber files? Gerbers are a vector format file that essentially creates an image of each of the layers in your PCB. So by being a vector format, they can be very easily resized to then fit into different view configurations. Gerbers are not the whole story when outputting manufacturing files from your PCB design software. You also need pick and place, and then you also need a bill of materials with all of your different components, so that way you know what is going to get assembled onto the board. If you're gonna do any kind of testing or you wanna be able to trace connections or throughout your Gerbers, you're then also gonna need a netlist format. This netlist format could be in an IPC format, and there could be other types of outputs such as like a 3D step file. You could also output something like a test point report that states which reference designators or which pads in the PCB are gonna be used as test points. Now with these files being the most popular, you'll actually see some manufacturer websites that allow you to directly upload your Gerbers and then immediately get a quote. So this is very convenient and because they're so common, the industry kind of perpetuates their use even though using Gerbers requires all of these other different files in order to fully describe your PCB. Now the next level of advancement in PCB manufacturing files is the ODB++ database. I don't know what ODB stands for. I'm sure you can Google it. This output requires a lot of files. So if you ever open up an ODB++ export, you will see many different files and a specific folder structure built into this export. So it's not something that you necessarily go in and modify manually like you would with Gerber's. So despite the fact that it also requires a lot of files to fully describe your PCB, an ODB++ export includes additional information such as the layers in your PCB stackup. Normally with Gerbers, you may have to have an image or an external stackup table, such as built-in Excel, that describes all the different layers in your stackup. This information is included in ODB++. The other thing that ODB++ includes is pad definitions. So pad definitions are very important because these are basically termination points for all the nets in your board. The other thing that it includes is a netlist output. So this netlist tells you what are all the connections in your PCB? So together with these two pieces of information, you can actually track individual connections throughout the PCB and you can define beginning points and end points. So this is one of the reasons that ODB++ is pretty commonly used in some simulation software. And I'll show you an example of what that looks like in just a moment. There are two other important pieces of information that are included in this database. So one is the BOM and then the other is pick and place. So the pick and place is actually built into the ODB++ export and this data can be fed into pick and place machines so you can plan for assembly. Now the next level of PCB design outputs is the IPC2581 database. Now this is a much more convenient database because it is just one file. It's not a big database of files like you have with ODB++, and it's not a bunch of separate groups of files like you might have with Gerber's. This export contains stack up data, just like you had in the ODB++ output. It contains pick and place data. It also contains net data, and it contains a bill of materials. It contains everything that you need to produce a board, all contained in one single database. So it's a very convenient database. And just recently, many players in the industry started supporting this data output format, including Altium. So aside from the IPC2581 output just being a single file, what are some of the advantages of using this output format? Well, I discussed this recently with Dana Korf, who actually sits on the IPC2581 Standards Committee. Let's take a look at what he has to say. 
So we started looking at what was missing. We built up over time. The concept was to have one file. You only pass the data parameter once. You don't pass it twice or three or four times. So in 2581, and I'll get to a couple other factors too, but in 2581, if I have a net, I can say what the material is. I can put in what the surface roughness is, top, bottom, and sidewalls. I can put in what the impedance is, what the impedance tolerance is, what the all the line width tolerances are. I can tell you on a pad what the surface finishes or surface finishes, all in the net description. I don't need a drawing to tell me that. I can extract it from the data file, actually. With the 2581, you can send your stack up across. And you can have your picture at the design side or the, your customer design side, have whatever picture they want to look at, send the attributes across, and I can look at it in whatever picture I want to look it at. And then 2581, you can include the different versions that go back and forth in the file. You can record them all. It's native to the, to the format. So given that there are some advantages to using IPC 2581 over Gerber's and ODB++, why aren't more players in the industry using it? Dana had some thoughts on this as well. The issue here is that either the design community doesn't know enough about this and the value, the manufacturers don't know enough about this and the value, or everybody is still stuck in the past because that's what they've been doing for the last 15 years, mm. and there's no impetus to change. So why am I going to stop generating Gerber's? Right, yeah. Humans hate change, which is normal. Actually, the stats we have is IPC 2581, we think, is around 5% of users actually using it. ODB, according to them, is around 20%. So after after 20 some odd years of two intelligent data formats, three quarters of the world still does it. In Asia, it's funny, you, you talk to a board vendor, send us your Gerber file, I'm gonna send you 2581. Yeah, that's Gerber. They call everything Gerber files. Doesn't matter what the format is. Ah, because <laughs> that's all they know, it's called Gerber. No, it's not Gerber, it's not Gerber at all. Now that we know about the three common PCB manufacturing file output types, let's take a look at these in a viewer so we can compare what information they contain. So here I'm in Altium Designer and I have one of the design review projects open from our one minute design review series. This one is from Armand Arvand and I have it pulled up here in a Gerber viewer. So here we've done the Gerber export and we can see what's going on here with the Gerber files just by looking in the Camtastic viewer in Altium Designer. Now here we have all of the layers stacked on top of each other in this view. Of course, I can isolate each layer, scroll through them and take a look at them and do any kind of DFA or DFM inspection that I might need to do. Now, if we just turn off, for example, the paste and the solder mask layers, we immediately see one of the things that we can't easily tell from just looking at Gerber files, which is pad definitions. So there really is no data built into the Gerber files that defines the pad specifically just in this output. Now, of course, if I zoom in and I look at, let's say, for example, these components over here, I can pick out by eye where the different pads are and where some of those components are. Now, one of the problems with this view is that it's not always so easy to pick out pad definitions. For example, if we had something soldered onto, let's say, this fill up in the top half of the board and there wasn't a silk screen outline and there wasn't a thermal attached, we might not know it's actually there. Sometimes if we look at these footprints, we can actually pick out where the pad definition definitions are, and you can do that just kind of by looking here within this silkscreen boundary. But typically, a machine is not going to be able to do that because it's not called out at specific coordinates in this render. The other thing that happens with our Gerber files is that we don't really have any consistent naming here. In fact, the only way we know how to distinguish the layers from these Gerber files is by looking at the extensions. So just as an example, if I isolate this layer, here you can tell that GBL is our bottom layer, that's the B and the L, whereas, for example, GBO is the bottom overlay or the bottom silk screen, so that's the B and the O, and so on and so forth as we scroll through these different layers. Now, one thing you can do to make this clear for a fabrication house is to call out the different Gerber file extensions in your fabrication drawing. And I've shown an example of how to do that in an earlier video. So make sure to check out the link in the description to watch our fabrication drawing video to see what I mean. So now to illustrate some of the advantages of the other file formats, let's take a look at the ODB++ render. So here I have the ODB++ render pulled up and it looks pretty similar to the Gerber render. In fact, if we just turn off our solder mask 
and our paste layers on the top and the bottom, we can then see that we already have a definition here for pads. And we can see it pretty clearly. It's actually this blue layer right here. So if I zoom in pretty close, you can see this blue overlay that we have in the front of the render. That is our pad definition. And if I turn off this CADNET top layer and the CADNET bottom layer, you'll see here that we have the drill symbols identifying through hole vias, and those are the pads for some of these components. So we can see that very clearly with this CADNET layer that is rendered in the board. The other advantage of the ODB++ database is seen here, if we look on the left side of the screen, you can see here that each of the layers is called out by name. And as I scroll through here, we actually have the specific names used for each of these layers given in the database. So for example, inner three, which is inner layer number three in this design, can actually be seen here in the PCB layout. You can see here if I just put inner three into single layer mode, this is inner layer three, and it uses the same name in the CAM database. Now we can see some other advantages if we use a simulation program to open up this database. So I'm gonna open up this database in Symbior. So here if I open up this database, we'll actually be able to see all of the different nets in this board. So once the database loads into the program, you'll see here on the right hand side of the screen that we have a big list of nets. So all of this net list data is encoded into the ODB++ export, and that's what allows me to go through and then select these nets and then run my simulations. So now that we've looked at Gerber's and ODB++ files, let's look at IPC2581 files. To do this, you need an IPC2581 viewer. They can be downloaded for free. Just Google IPC2581 viewer and you'll be able to find several options. You can also check the link in the description. Now here I have the same board pulled up in the WISE 2581 viewer. Now you can see here on the right hand side of the screen that I have all of the same layer options that we had in the Gerber and ODB++ views and I can go through and scroll and turn them on and off as needed. Now the capabilities that you have available to you in this view really depends on the viewer that you're using to examine your IPC2581 output. For example, with this program, I can go through and view the NC tools, I can view the stack up, I can view impedance information if it's embedded, I can add and delete impedance profiles, I can do things like this. So this is all of the same type of stuff that you could do with an ODB++ output, it's just much more convenient because you're using a single file. Unfortunately, it hasn't seen the same level of adoption as Gerber's and ODB++, but that might change in the future. Thanks for watching this video, everybody. Make sure to hop into the comments and let us know what output formats you prefer. And of course, leave your comments and questions in the comments section. Hit that subscribe button. And finally, don't forget to call your fabricator, folks.